Morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for your commitment to being here today. Um, because it's your time, you can't get back, so you made that decision to be here today. And I'm thankful that someone who I will unreasonably put in the same category as myself, someone who's a mentalist, who I aspire to be, introduced me today. Thank you, Phoenix. It's, it's an honour. Idealist. Mentalist, ideologist. I'm not going to talk about that stuff. I'm just here to talk about stress. <laughs> Priya gave me a call. So I'm running this event. And I said, okay, what is it? And she goes, well, people are struggling at the moment. And you know how to help people with that. What, what can, would you like to come along? What's it going to be? Can you, you know, I said, of course, I'll sponsor it. I'll come along. Well, wh well what do you think we're going to talk about? Priya. I'll have a conversation with them. Because it's not about presenting for me. It's about having a conversation. I'm a counselling psychology practitioner. I deal with families that break apart, that want to stay together as well. Families that lose family members. I'm a grief counsellor. Relationship coach and counsellor. Addiction specialist. Anxiety and depression counsellor. The list goes on. You can look on LinkedIn. But what I've got is 40 years of experience of life. So when we talk about stress, I'm going to change the ball game today with how I'm going to share this information with you because we've got a small group. But what I want you to think about first, and you might want to write this down, however, we will send you the recording. Stress releases cortisol. Repeat after me. Stress releases cortisol. Stress, stress releases, releases cortisol. Cortisol works opposite to melatonin. Repeat after me. Cor cortisol works opposite to melatonin. What puts us to bed at night? Melatonin. So if we stress, which by the way is something we need, we need stress, we need a minor amount of anxiety, otherwise we'd all be jumping off the edge, walking in front of cars. We need anxiety, we need stress, but at a certain level. So if stress releases cortisol, and cortisol is the opposite, or works opposite to melatonin, and melatonin helps us sleep, And if we get less sleep, we will naturally make poorer decisions and then it becomes a cycle. But why is sleep important or why is even meditation important to stress? Clear the clutter. Clear the clutter. So in our brain during the day, there's a plaque, just like the plaque in our teeth, it's called amyloid plaque, and that builds up during the day. And when you get deep sleep, there is little microbiobules inside your brain that cleans that amyloid plaque only during deep sleep. No other time. It doesn't clean it any other time. So if you're getting less sleep, this amyloid plaque builds up. Now this amyloid plaque has been closely related to, in the medical board, and scientifically to Alzheimer's and dementia, which can start 50 to 60 years prior to when it sets in. Now, why is this important? Why is this important when I'm talking about stress? It's because worry comes from the brain or your head or your automatic negative thoughts. And caring for something comes from your heart. So when we say to people, well, I don't care anymore, well, really you do, because then you walk away and do what? Stress. You walk away and stress about it. You actually do care about it. You just don't want, want to worry about it anymore. But you need to learn how to do that. What got you here today? What actually got you here today? 
Anyone? Sharon. Cool. And why did and why did you and Sharon come here today? Vera? Why, why did you and Sharon come here today? Why did you come here? Yes. Other than the fact that you might be both presenting. Okay, I'm not presenting. Sharon is Sharon's presenting. I came to support her, but um, we share the belief of um, networking with like minded people. Great. Right. Awesome. It's yeah. a lovely way to put it. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon. Okay. Addiction to growth. I came up with the business name when I was 18 years old, when I was working for Telstra, telecommunications, and those that remember as telecom, telecom. yes, I'm not, I may not look that old, but I'm old. <laughs> and the, the, the name actually originated from addicted to sell. Because at the time, cell phones were coming in and I was like absolutely addicted to them new technology and all of the folks that I would say politely that are older than me, I got to educate them on how it works and that was fun. There was no stress in our shop. However, I would witness my manager and some of the things that she would do and I said to myself, if I'm ever in that position, I'm not going to do that because we learn what not to do from those that are predecessors. So from a very young age, I learnt how not to stress and different things that I could do. But one of those things that I did was an unhealthy coping mechanism. Who understands what an unhealthy coping mechanism is? Or an addiction? So when I'm talking about stress, we have coping mechanisms. And Mr Sigmund Freud and his family, I'm pretty sure his daughter and his son, came up with 12 defense mechanisms. Part of this coping mechanism that I created, the unhealthy one, was two decades of addiction. And if you come and see me privately, we can talk about it. But on the other side of that, I created such a healthy coping mechanism that I began to get addicted to growth. And the name went from addicted to sell to addicted to grow and now has evolved to addiction to growth. So when you think about stress, how many of you even worried this morning how you're going to get here? Anyone? There was just a slight worry that just went through your mind? Is anyone worrying about what time they're going to leave here? Some of the speakers, are you worried about the, the empty seats? Are you worried about that? Worry starts it off. Stress is just a signal. It's a signal to let us know that we care about something. So when you're worrying, where does that come from? Our head. And caring comes from our heart. So when you get that stress signal... It's just telling you, hey, you care about this. You care about it. Unearth. Unearth the truth behind the lies you're telling yourself. Let's look at the word conquer because that's a very strange word to have in a byline of a logo. Who'd like to have a crack at what conquer means to you? Just say it. What does conquer mean to you? Overcome. Overcome. Achieve. Achieve. Achieve the unachievable. Master. Yeah, master. How many times do we think about them things like, I can't do it? Make it happen. Yeah. Make it happen. Come on, let's make it happen. Right? A very good question from this gentleman before, which backed up your presentation about leaders are different from managers. Because a leader recognises this stuff. They recognise it. That you go to the team to ask for input, not just think what you can do about it. If you're stressed, Mel Robbins talks about this all the time, vulnerability. 
so does Brene Brown. When we're vulnerable with our team, what's the first thing that our team then does with us? Connect. This year's words, connection. Especially after the last three years we've been through. So conquer, to achieve the unachievable. Now what does champion mean? That's a pretty game word for me to put in my byline. I'm not number one of anything in this world. I've got some good titles that I've pulled over my working years when I was working for Toyota and Nissan. I used to travel to Japan. But I don't need to get into that. To champion means to do the achieve the unachievable continuously over time and time and time again. There's a runner. You know the runner that I'm thinking of straight away. Who is he? Usain Bolt. 16 years, 20 years, number one. 20 years. He trains like nine hours a day sometimes when it's peak season where he's ready for a nine second, nine to 10 second run. Now that's champion. And if I'm game enough to use it up there, it's because I championed my addiction. And if later on we have a conversation, this is why I understand stress. Now, Emily Fletcher wrote a really good book, Stress Less, Accomplish More. If you guys want to know about stress, it's a lovely book. If you want to understand about how to meditate, because that's the number one place to start with dealing with stress, it's learning how to meditate. I don't need to regurgitate that. But what I want to do with you today, because these little sessions are only short, and this is interesting, because Naomi did this yesterday. And I already had this thought that if the room's intimate and small enough, I want to go and sit with you guys. Because it's not about presenting for me. It's about having a conversation. So let's do things differently. Who's had a stressful situation in their life? Yeah. Okay. One or two. One or two? All right. Lost the house. Okay, cool. I'm, first of all, I'm going to tell you a story. And the story's just going to put you and I all on the same level. It's not about presenting. <clears throat> June 2017. You are presenting. You are presenting. <laughs> <laughs> June 2017. I woke up. It was a beautiful day. Two feet on the floor. Thank you for another day. I get dressed. I make a coffee, a short one, but a strong one. And I walk out my back door where I converted the shed that my father built into a gym. That was my business. And I just remember the smell of the rubber gym flooring on the ground. You know the smell. A bit of sweat, a bit of blood, a bit of tears. Just running my hands over the cold metal of the weights as I was walking in, birds chirping outside, silent, 6 a.m., waiting for the first client. I roll the roller door up and it's east facing, so the sun was on my face. Warm, soft. I get a message on my phone, ding, ding. I thought maybe the client is not coming or running late. I read the message. We need to talk later. I read your messages in your phone. I dropped to my knees. Blood was pumping. Hands were sweaty. I knew what I did. I watched the family SUV drive away, packed. Blue car, never forget it. I walk inside. Look on the mantelpiece where there's a few Lego pieces for me to play on my own. I 
I enrolled in some courses. I got some certificates. Piero Mardesic, congratulations on passing your Diploma of Psychology. Majoring in addiction. I went to my mum. Look at me, mum. It doesn't matter. Look what you did. Made some plans. Opened a business. 2022, wrote some goals down. Number one goal, be on TV. This time a text message from my mum. Hey son, you were on TV. What did I conquer? The truth behind the lies that I told myself. What am I still championing? Business is 99% psychology and 1% strategy. And those 1% strategies are broad. There's only 1% of them. It doesn't matter whether it's finance, sales, marketing. The strategy, you can give someone the strategy. Today you'll get given strategies. I'll even give you a strategy. Meditation, do it. The psychology, are you going to do it every day? The psychology, are you going to do it every day? Mental health starts with brain health. I'm a brain health coach with Dr. Daniel Amen. Coach, professional trainer. Master practitioner in NLP. The certificates on the wall mean nothing. They just satisfy my ego. How many people have heard your ego is not your amigo? Yeah. But see, this is interesting. When I studied psychology, I, I learnt that when you can walk beside your ego and not against it, things change. Things change. Your thoughts become feelings, become actions. But when you act upon a thought or a feeling, it becomes fictional reality. Let me say that again. When you act upon your thoughts and your feelings, they become fictional reality. Now do you understand where stress comes from? So, in business, you want to balance between being a robot and a leader, or a manager, a boss, a HR person, the shoulder to cry on, the salesperson that can pull something out their bum that month because we're struggling, the marketing person that'll say, gosh, we really need to do something about that. Everyone understand what I mean? You're all things. But you will stress less. You will stress less. When you learn to walk beside your ego, to feel those emotions and grab hold of those thoughts, because those thoughts aren't real. They are not real. You choose what you think about. You choose what you think about. So, who's got a story to tell me about stress? Tell me. Oh, I started. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Um, I was teach, uh, I was invited to speak at a young entrepreneur's course yes. at the last night, and they're telling me some wonderful stories. And I said, <coughs> worst night in my life is when my in my bedroom my wife was crying her eyes out, and I couldn't console her because the next day we're moving out of the house because the bank had foreclosed. And what we're going to do. So that's, that's stress. Pretty that's pretty stressful. Like three kids, four cats, <laughs> a dog. What we? I mean, we had planned before then, but the last time she said, "Balling," I thought I'd be carried out here in a box. It's a house we planned and built built for us. 
I'll, you know, I'll, when I'm dead, I'll be carried out of here. But I was telling someone that earlier. A few years later, we're having lunch together, and she said, that was the best thing that ever happened, was in our house. Of course, things, other things changed. So out of stress <laughs> comes happiness. Stress is momentary. So is happiness. So is anger. All these traits, states, states of mind, body, and soul, they're all just momentary. The difference is understanding how to accept them and how long you stay in them. Because regardless of what you hear, all the stuff, and I've done it myself, get rid of your trigger in 30 minutes, come and do a breakthrough for eight hours, I've done all that stuff. But see, the difference is if you want to progress into understanding leadership, you've got to struggle. And how long you stay in that struggle is going to determine your level of leadership or self-leadership. So do you mean the longer you struggle, the better leader you become? No, let's talk about it differently and I'll tell a metaphor. A caterpillar, when its time's up, it wraps itself in a cocoon. When it wraps itself in that cocoon, if you were to find one, and you were like, I'm going to help this butterfly. I'm going to help this caterpillar out. It looks like it's struggling. I'm going to cut the cocoon. But see, if you understand what's happening with a caterpillar as it metamorphoses into a butterfly, it's struggling so much because it's actually sending the blood from the larvae of the body up in to create wings. So it's actually moving that blood all that fat that it ate, all those little roses that I kept trying to leave them alone from. That's what it's doing inside that cocoon. And when it becomes full enough and ready to actually fly, the cocoon breaks open. So then it's ready to go to get away from birds straight away. So it's not how long we stay in it, it's to understand why I'm struggling right now understanding it. So what I mean by staying in the length of struggle is you will always be triggered. For the rest of your life, you'll always be triggered. And I like what you said because we have children for that exact purpose because they mirror what we need to learn. What we are here to learn is what we are here to teach. So when someone triggers you, you can stay in that moment to learn it and process it or you can stay in it for five minutes, five hours, five days, 50 days, five years, 50 years. Because all you're gonna do is beat yourself up over it. Who's heard of that? Who's done that? Who's done that for more than two days? Right. How many times have you had a fight with your partner and just walked around the house in silence? Silence is good for the right reason, but holding that angst inside your mind against them while they're over there, that's all you. <laughs> that's the worst. And that's stress. And stress creates what? Cortisol. cortisol. Stress releases what? Cortisol. And cortisol is the opposite of melatonin. And melatonin helps you sleep. So the more you stress, the less sleep you get. And you're unable to clean your brain out. Now I was going to do Q&A. Because talking about stress in these times, we all know that we can be resilient. We've all done that over the last couple of years. And you're all exceptional leaders in your own way. That's why we're here. There's some amazing people I've spoken to this morning that have probably made hundreds and thousands and six figures and probably lost it all too. Because that's part of it. Probably a good example over there. But who's got a question about stress? Who wants to understand it differently? Anyone got a question? Or even maybe a story? The lady was first.
how they manage and handle stress. Your name is? My name is Carolyn. Nice to meet you, Carolyn. Nice to meet you. Piero. It's a really good question. So many people handle stress differently. How can we handle it differently? How can we be prepared for it in different times? Is that correct? Or during, like, with your work teams? Okay. Number one, I'm sure all of you guys will agree with me, experience. Experience. If you're fresh in a new job place, I walked out of Nissan and walked into Toyota. But Toyota and Nissan were the same. Still about selling cars, still about numbers. For them it was just numbers on the board. For me it was keeping my team happy so that they could sell the numbers. A manager's role is to manage the role and take care of the people. So how do you, so how do you prepare? Let me give you the simplest answer. Why must you be prepared? That's not a question, that's rhetorical. I want everyone to think about that. You're a manager, are we talking about a leadership role? Okay. Why must we be prepared to handle stress and different people's stress? Why? Because they're looking up to you. They're already looking up to you. So how you handle your stress is going to reflect on who? Them. And they're going to learn from you. Just like children. They do as you do. They don't do as you say. We've all been there. It was lovely what you brought up before. So how can you be prepared? Number one, how are you looking after you? So that would be another thing. Number one, experience. Number two, why? Why do you need to learn how to handle your stress? Number three, reach out to a coach or a mentor. Find someone who's been where you've been before and just ask them. What have you done differently? There's plenty of tips I could give you. If I give away too many how-tos, you might not come and see me after this. But here's a few more good ones. And I want to find some really juicy ones. In your role, every single person's different like you mentioned. Everyone's different. One-on-ones, once a week. One-on-ones, once a week. Okay? First thing, get to know your people. Forget everything else in that moment. Just like me sitting down on the chair, sharing that story with you. And I'm gonna use a line that I mentioned to Pete earlier. <laughs> right? Relationships in business, connections, are not made in the boardroom. They're made at the water fountain. I'm going to quote Simon Sinek, one of my favourite other speakers. I'd love to keep going. Please, I'm here all day. Take the time. I'd love to meet with you. If there's anything I can share with you, I will. But once again, enjoy today and reach out to some of these people because they've, their experience is going to give you far more than sometimes the presentation will. Enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.